even the, in the military, I've done six months full-time recovery training just to be a basic recovery mechanic and then other courses after that. So it's a massive, massive beast. So I'll just run through a few basic recovery scenarios and um, just so you've got a, a bit of an understanding of, of a few concepts that you can use that'll get you out of trouble. Imagine a your vehicle, you're traveling with two vehicles, one vehicle has a winch, the other vehicle does not have a winch. So say this is your track and you're stuck down here and you're bogged or you can't get up the hill, something's going wrong. Um, let's say this vehicle does not have a winch. Your mate's got a winch, he's already up the hill and he's, he, can't, he can't sit at the top of the hill, okay? He can't get a good angle at the top of the hill. If he's at the top of the hill, you can't, you've got nowhere to be at the top of the hill. Just a scenario, right? So there's a track off to the side, he can sit off here. So this is gonna be what we call an indirect using a pulley block. So you need to find, if you're lucky, there'll be a nice, nice big tree over here somewhere that you can use. And you set up your recovery off that. So that's your anchor point. So you need to run the winch rope from his winch around a pulley block and back down to this vehicle. Now the trouble with that is your vehicle is stuck and your vehicle weighs the same as his. He's sitting up here on flat ground. So when he winches, sorry, what's it, 12, 12 ton? 12 ton, the, the uh, rated pull of the uh, 9.8 ton. Let's round it off to 10. He's gonna put 10 ton of, of uh, load on that winch rope. So he's gonna be pulling you forward 10 ton and him forward 10 ton. Which vehicle's gonna move? Not you. His vehicle's gonna move. So what you may need to do is utilize a second pulley block and do an indirect two to one. So how that's gonna work is you then do a compensator strap off your vehicle and have a pulley block here and your winch rope needs to come down around that pulley block and then back to the tree. So now remembering each winch rope has 10 ton on it, right? So there's 10 ton on this one, there's 10 ton on this one and there's 10 ton on this one. So now there's 10 ton pulling his vehicle forward and now there's 20 ton pulling your vehicle forward your vehicle is going to move. Nice and simple. If things are really bad, you can keep going. So you might use an extra tree protector strap and do what we call a lollipop. So you'll have your anchor point, you'll have a tree protector strap around there to a pulley block here. Then you might run off that tree protector, off the shackle there, another tree strap out to another pulley block here. Okay, just gets more technical. Your winch rope now comes around there and back down to that anchor point. So now you've got 10, 10, 10, 30 ton pulling your vehicle up and still only 10 ton on his. So if, if he's on ground that isn't ideal, might be some loose shaley ground, might be a bit of a downslope. It's never a perfect scenario. So he might, he might only be able to hold, say, two ton of ground traction um, that pulls him forward, but now you've got six ton. If he's got two, six ton pulling you forward. It's probably gonna be enough, you know, plus you driving, it's probably gonna enough to get you up that hill or out of that mud. Could you anchor the winching vehicle back? That's always possible. Um, that can open up a can of worms but it's, it, it, in a perfect scenario, you've got a, a tree in the right spot or a third vehicle and a strap of some sort, anchor it between these two vehicles. If you're gonna do that though, whichever, um, so if you're using the winch on this truck, use a compens compensator strap off both sides of your chassis so you don't twist your chassis. If you do it on one side, it's gonna twist your chassis. And same, same, if you're using an anchor point on the front of this vehicle and say you're using this winch opposite way around. Make sure if you use an anchor point on the right hand side of the vehicle, tie this side back to the tree from the right hand side of the vehicle. 
Make sense? Just so you're not twisting the chassis. Um, so from there we can go, you know, my picture's getting a bit busy. Uh, if that uh, three to one system's still not pulling you out, you get a four to one. Get another pulley block. So then we've got a pulley block off here, a pulley block there, another pulley block here, another pulley block there, and then anchored back to the tree. One, two, three, four, there's 40 tonne pull on that vehicle. So, depending on what the situation is, you just keep, yeah, you just keep, just keep adding snatch blocks. Uh, and if, yeah, if you're putting too much load on a tree, um, so a general, a, a general rule we'll use in the, with, with selecting trees, it's a general rule because no, no ground is the same, no tree root system is the same, but a general rule is 100 mil at the base will do one tonne and then every 10 mil after that is, an, is another tonne. So, but having said that, I've <laughs> Like I say, every, tr every root system is different, every ground, you know, density is different. And so I've had, tree, I've had a tree come down at me, um, and I, I can tell you now, I, I ran like Usain Bolt, and, um, and the, tr the top of the tree landed exactly where I was standing on the winch controls. Um, and, and that tree was, you know, sort of four, 450 wide at the base, but we were pulling up a dozer, so uh, a little bit different. So does that make sense to everybody? Just simple, simple winching setups there. Um, so if you can get your vehicle in a perfect world, and you in a perfect world, and your vehicle is directly in front of the uh, recovered vehicle. So vehicle here. Uh, we use this winch here, so we're coming off a pulley block there, pulley block there, pulley block there, and anchored back to there. One, two, three, four. That's a four to one. But remembering this vehicle needs to be uh, held back as well, so you may need to line up other vehicles behind it or anchor it to a tree. And, oh. uh, are wheel chocks a good idea or not a good idea? Really good question, Phil. Thank you. So, a um, common mistake that I get from students in the ADF as well, they all suggest, you know, because they've, they're taught safety, 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 you know, they've just done their uh, tyre changing exercise and uh, they've done thing, things in the yard on a nice concrete surface and they're, they're all taught safety, safety, it's a big thing these days. Um, so, they think wheel chocks, you know, oh, I'm bogged, I'm stuck on a hill, whatever, I'll get some wheel chocks out. It's the last thing you want to do. Um, if you're on a rocky surface and you put a wheel chock there that's made of metal or even plastic or even the rubber ones, um, they'll slide on the rock surface before your tyre will. So you're better off just having your tyre and the traction of your tyre, especially with deflated tyres because you sure will deflate your tyres when you go off road. Um, that's got a lot more traction on the ground than a wheel chock. Likewise, if you're in the mud and if you rely on that wheel chock, it's going to push that wheel chock into the ground and you'll lose it. So yeah, good question, but yeah, no, uh, don't use wheel chocks. Um, anything, any rock or anything you jam under the tyres, it's just going to reduce your amount of traction on the ground, so you're better off just having that tyre. Um, what else can we add here? Um, with recovery, you know, unless you've done you know, years of training or whatever, just keep it simple. Um, there's all sorts of calculations I could rattle through on how to work out what your total pull required will be to pull you out of a, a, a situation. But you, know, you operate in a winch that's got around about 10 tonne pull on the bottom layer. You know, it's probably something like seven on the second layer, you know, six, five and a half on the next layer, probably four and a half on the next layer after that. So, you know, you're dealing with, with a winch 
Um, just start simple, single line pull. If that doesn't pull it out, or if that's loading up the winch too much, do a double line pull. Put, add one pulley block in. If that doesn't pull it out easy, add a third, then add a fourth, or fifth, sixth is how many pulley blocks you've got. Yeah? Um, the last thing you want to do is have your winch, particularly electric winches, as good as they are, as good as the Runver, Runver brand is, they're still relying on an electric motor that does heat up. If you're loading up that winch and it's struggling to turn, it might be pulling you up that slope, but if you keep, keep you know, hammering it, it's gonna burn out. We all know someone that's burning out a, a nice good winch, hey? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So just throw a pulley block in there, a second pulley block, a third pulley block, until your winch is doing it nice and easy. And then even then, still give it a rest if you're doing a nice long uh, winch job up a hill. A little bit trickier um, winching situations. Tight pressures add more or less rolling resistance <coughs> to the vehicle being recovered. Uh, yeah, good, good question. So higher tire pressure on a, hot, on a hard ground is gonna be less rolling resistance but a lower tire pressure on a rough or a soft ground is gonna be lower uh, rolling resistance. Um, even bumpy ground, if it's hard, a lower pressure will be easier because say your tire's here, sitting here, and you get a rock in front of it, at a high pressure, it needs to take a steep rise to get up over that rock, where if, if the tire is flat or a lower pressure, the, the actual vehicle won't ri rise up as much. It'll be like going over a slight hill. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah, back the tire out. Exactly, bags out, yep. So, pretty tricky winching scenario. Um, you're going up a hill and you found yourself slide sideways into a rut and you're just about to roll over. Um, and you want to pull the rear of the truck to the side. Let's say you've only got a winch on the front. So, um, there's your track. You've slid the rear end of the vehicle to the side, but you've only got a front winch. How are you going to pull the rear of the vehicle across you know, to the side? Hopefully you've got some good trees around. So you'll need a tree out here somewhere. And you'll need a good tree out here somewhere. You winch rope off the front, around a pulley block, around a pulley block, and onto an anchor point on the, on the back or side of your vehicle. 10 ton there, 10 ton there. Maybe you don't want to pull yourself forward that, that hard, you need, just need to pull the rear of the vehicle sideways. Just pull a pulley block there, anchor it back to the tree. Now you've got 20 ton, 10 ton. We're talking full load, full, full strength of the winch. You probably won't need that much load to pull your vehicle sideways, but that's the maximum load of your winch. Uh, if that's still pulling you forward too much, you need to pull the rear of the vehicle sideways. Again, just add another pulley block and then come back to an anchor point. Make sure the anchor point uh, spreads the load of, the, of the, the pull across the chassis. Um, find a nice solid point. Um, with your equipment, any tackle you use, you have to think maximum pull of the winch and stress your tackle. So what we call stress your tackle, it's you go through and look at all your tackle you've laid out and make sure that everything's rated high enough for the maximum load it's going to withstand. So obviously, if we've put one, two, three to one here, then whatever we've got around that tree needs to be able to withstand 30 tonne. In a perfect world, that's great. Um, now, you, you need to make the uh, decision on the ground sometimes, though, if you need... Uh, if you, if you know for sure that you're not going to load up the winch to its maximum pull, you know you're only going to put a couple of tonne on it to pull the vehicle sideways, or whatever the case is, you need to be just sure in your head that uh, any tackle you're using is going to cover that. And um, so what, what, what would you attach all this tackle to on your vehicle here? Yeah, so it'll depend on your vehicle. But make sure it's, make sure it's, like, don't just, yeah, good point. Don't just attach it to, say, a tie-down point or your rail across the side of the tray. You'll just rip that straight off. 
make sure it's attached to your chassis. You don't attach it to a, a wheel or a spring or a shock absorber or anything like that. Um, definitely not your air tanks. Yeah, find something solid like on your chassis. Similarly, you can pull your vehicle rearwards, same method. It's probably getting a little bit technical, but just, you know, if you're out in the middle of nowhere, if you've seen this on a whiteboard, you think, hmm, I might give that a go rather than waiting, you know, five days for recovery yet to come out to me. Um, you could be stuck in the Simpson Desert in, in a, what is it, a, a Mitsubishi? <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly right. <laughs> No, he's stuck there for a long time. So let's say you want to... Okay, so that's your vehicle. That's the front of your vehicle. Rear of your vehicle. Here's your winch. You've got a tree out here. You know, magically, you've got a tree in the right spot. And you've got another tree back here. Bingo. Around a pulley block. Around a pulley block. Compensator strap around a pulley block and back to the tree. How many tonne we got pulling forwards? Ten. Ten tonne on that. That doesn't. It's not moving anywhere between two trees. Ten tonne and ten tonnes. So we got twenty tonne pulling us rearwards. Ten tonne pulling us forwards. It's. It'll make some minds boggle, thinking, oh, "Hang on, but it's going to pull me forward, but that's going to pull me backwards. Which way is the car going to move?" it'll move backwards. So every metre you pull on here, that's going to move half a metre, that's going to move half a metre. So you'll, you'll move half metre rearwards. But while that, while that does that, you're getting further away from this tree. So then it won't quite be just half a metre, it'll be uh, 750 mil. It's a bit, bit complicated, but it'll work. So. If you are stuck in that situation, just take your time thinking about it because you've probably got time waiting for any sort of recovery to come out to you. Or, or yeah, exactly. Or, or even just waiting for waiting for someone to come along with a, a sat phone that you can call someone. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you got a bit of time. Take your time. Or if you're on Fraser Island somewhere, you shouldn't be. Trees or anything like that, could you use your spare wheel and put it down into the grip? Yeah, definitely, yeah. 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 That'd be one anchor point, yeah. yeah. Um, For that exercise, you need two spare wheels. Yeah, well. Yeah. Well, hopefully, if you're going across the desert or somewhere remote, that you'll carry a second, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm just going to talk about some safety as well before we go out of, outside. Okay, so if you're just doing a single line pull straight to this tree, um, let's say you've got 10 metres of rope out off your winch. Safe zone, um, as, far as, um, as far as authorities are concerned, is one and a half times your winch rope paid out. So if you've got 10, 10 metres of, excuse me, 10 metres of winch rope paid out, then you need to have everybody that doesn't need to be in the area 15 metres away, away from that rope, in either direction. Obviously the worst place to be is this direction. Because if, if something snaps here, it's flying that way. If something snaps here, it's flying that way. Unimog's got a lot of ground clearance, so a winch rope and whatever tackle you've got here, if you're using metal shackles and metal snatch blocks or whatever you've got, it'll go that way, underneath the vehicle, and it'll fly. And just to just to get your head thinking about it, uh, in the army there has been an occurrence where a now this is with qualified, trained recovery mechanics. There's been you know metal fatigues. There's always some things that can go wrong. So um, there's been plenty of snappages and things flying in the army. Don't even worry about that. On one occurrence there was a a snatch block much bigger than what we've got here. A snatch block, a pulley block that um, was like a slingshot when the anchor point snapped and it flew through the air with so much velocity that the snatch block itself 
went through the side of an armoured tank. So you can imagine what that would do to you, your body or your head. So just take, take recovery seriously. I can't sort of harp on about it enough. <laughs> yeah, it'd be a lot of mess, yeah. Um, righto, so single line pull, that's your safe area, is one and a half. Uh, in saying that, whoever's in control of the recovery job and controlling the winches, obviously you can't be that far away. You need to be able to see what's going on. So let's call you the controller. You need to be standing out here somewhere so you can see what's going on. If you can be in a raised position, if you, you can have a big tree you know, in front of you somewhere so that if anything does fly off in your direction, um, you're safe to a certain extent. Um, when things snap, shrapnel bits and pieces from a shackle can fly in any direction. So don't just think that if you're at the side, you're safe. It's still, it's unlikely, but you're still in a dangerous area. All right. um, let's go to a, another truck out here to winch there. This here is what we call a V. That's your real dangerous area. Cause, so this is where our tank was. Snatch block, anchor point here snapped. Snatch block went through the side of the tank there. So this is the danger zone. Anywhere inside this arc, don't be there. Like it doesn't matter how far away. Don't, I'm not just talking about one and a half times the length, just don't be there at all. You know, be, make sure no one's there, like a few hundred meters away, like, at least things can fly a long way. So that's your, that's your danger zone. Cause I mean, 10 ton here, 10 ton there. There's a lot of load on that anchor point, yeah? Call it 20, it won't be, won't be quite 20 if you're 90 degrees. It'll be 20 if you're straight back this way. But just think of it as being 20, keep it simple. 20 ton on that, it's like a slingshot if that takes off. Um, so yeah, that's your V, keep everyone out of the V. Um, anyone that doesn't need to be there, send them away. Especially, you know, Joe Bloggs that's an expert. Whenever you're doing a recovery and there's other people around, there's always plenty of experts. Ask them really nicely, say, hey mate, I really need your help with this. I need someone to just stay over there and keep people at a safe area, keep people away. So if anyone comes in, they're not in my dangerous area. Send them out of the, out of the way. Give them a job, you know. Get them, get it, yeah, make them feel important, exactly. So in the army, I talk about doing that with officers. You, officers, you send them over there. Don't give them a compass, because they'll get lost on the way. But <laughs> just send them away, say, sir, you've got rank, I need you to do a really important job. Keep everyone away from this area and send them away, right? Um, um, always have some gloves with you, if you're dealing, especially if you're dealing with steel wire rope. Any, um, any frays, make sure you're using gloves. Um, yeah, okay, I'll talk about that. Steel wire rope is really deadly. If just on a single line pull, Single line pull, if steel wire rope lets go, it's, there's so much elasticity in steel wire rope and so much weight, it flies. If this anchor point snaps, that steel wire rope will fly back until it's fully extended out the other direction. And it, at the end, it'll whip. And anything in its way, it'll take it out. There was a, in a certain full driving area, I used to go almost every weekend. Uh, there was a fellow that was down a hill in a Prado with a winch rope that was already frayed. He was down a track that he shouldn't have been down and uh, evidently used his winch and snapped the winch rope. It cut his calf muscle to pieces. Um, you know, he was in surgery for a long time getting that rebuilt. Um, sued the landowner too, which was made it even worse, but you know, so but there's people out there that do these sort of things. So just be real careful with steel or rope. Ideally, make the switch to synthetic rope. It's more expensive. It uh, it can't. It's not as durable. If it rubs on rocks, um, it it wears out quicker. I mean, you just replace it more often. But that one time that it does snap, it just goes kapoof, and drops. It doesn't fly and doesn't kill anyone. A steel wire rope 
um, a piece of steel wire rope flying and snapping, whipping at you will tear you to shreds. A piece of synthetic rope, Dyneema rope, flying at you and whipping you will just feel like I don't know, your two-year-old slap you across the face. Um, likewise with shackles, a shackle, a four and a half ton or a, a, eight, and a eight and a half ton shackle, if that's flying through the air, it's going straight through your vehicle. It'll go straight through the sides, the headboard, everything, straight through your vehicle and come out the other side with, with, with part of you attached to it, you know. A soft shackle that's rated at 25 or whatever ton, if that flies through the air and hits you, it'd be like getting punched in the head by diesel. Where is he? Yeah, but it's not going to kill you, okay? It's, just, it's going to hurt, but it's not going to kill you. So just try to make the switch to synthetic. Same, same with snatch straps. If you are going to use snatch straps, um, try to make the switch to the new style kin kinetic ropes. Um, they've got a lot more stretch. They put more stress, uh, sorry, less stress on your tackle, less stress on your chassis and equipment, and it gives you a better chance to uh, get out of that bog or sticky situation that you're in. Um, just quickly, the difference between a snatch strap. So a snatch strap that's say 10 meters long, they have 20% 20, 20 stretch. So it'll stretch out to tw 12 meters. That's not a great deal. So in that distance, your vehicle that's bogged, it has, well, it's down here. So here's your vehicle. When the recovering vehicle takes up tension on that, the amount of velocity that it's gained in the distance that it's taken off, that is now uh, implied on the rope, implied onto your vehicle that you're trying to recover. If it's only got two metres of stretch, it might take, say, a second for it to go from taking up tension to zero to then springing back till there's zero tension again. You know, it might, might be two seconds there. Whereas if you've got a kinetic rope, that's got say 40% stretch, that's four meters, the time it takes for the vehicle, once it's gained its momentum, to get from there to zero and then back, that'll be four seconds. So that's four seconds of pressure applied to your vehicle to pull you out of the mud. So they're much better. Make sure you use compensator straps too on your vehicle if you're doing a snatch recovery. Attach it to both sides of the chassis so you're not twisting your chassis. Um, yeah, gentle pressure. <laughs> the common mistake that people make when they're, when they're the recovering vehicle with a snatch strap or snatch recovery is they'll take off and when it takes up tension, they'll really give it the berries and they'll bury themselves. That's not the idea of a snatch strap. The snatch strap is mom a momentum thing. So you reach the, the tension you basically need to back off the throttle at that point in time. Just use the, the velocity, like a spring, and then bounce back. And you just increase the amount of pressure, you know, incrementally. Start off just gentle with a little bit of a pull. Say first gear, just a little yink. If that doesn't pull them out and doesn't make them move, then try a second, a little bit more, a few more revs, and until you've, you've got a, a bit more of a uh, bit more momentum a bit more velocity and um, until you pull them out. I think we've covered everything there. Um, if I think of any other safety points out there, I'll mention as well. But...